What is up, I'm Sergeant Ballistic, but you guys can call me Brian. Thank you for checking out this video. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at the NVIDIA GeForce Experience Share software, which allows you to record, share, and stream your greatest gaming moments with the entire world. I've already done an overview of the rest of the GeForce Experience software. You can find links to that in the description and probably in annotations popping up around my head. But in this video, I'm gonna go into pretty much every single setting and feature and talk about it a little bit, talk about the settings that you can do and just really go over it in great detail. So without much further ado, let's get into it. So of all the screen recording software I've tried over the years, I've found NVIDIA's GeForce Experience Share, kind of formerly still kind of known as Shadowplay, to be some of my favorite in terms of overall quality and just uh, ease of use. With features like instant replay, you're able to capture those game moments you didn't expect to happen with just a quick key press. So if you go on a crazy kill streak, just playing out of your mind, you can capture that, upload it. Or if you're a content creator, you can manually record and you know just like upload that stuff. You can sh uh, stream to Twitch, you can stream to your friends now. It's just overall really, really powerful set of software. Now all of this is made possible by NVIDIA GeForce cards, which feature a dedicated encoder coding processor which outputs a stream of your rendered gameplay for recording or broadcasting. Because of this, it means that you will experience almost no perceivable performance impact while recording or streaming, which is a huge bonus. Some other streaming recording software like OBS can utilize this encoder as well, but it requires a little bit more of setup configuration, whereas GeForce Experience Share kind of is just ready to go out of the box as soon as you install the software. If your NVIDIA GeForce card is on the list of supported cards, then you can utilize these features. Just check out this page in GeForce Experience to make sure you have a supported card. In the new GeForce Experience beta software, everything is controlled by hitting the share icon in the top right corner of the interface. This opens up the share overlay where you can make changes to all of your settings like quality and keyboard shortcuts. Alternatively, you can hit Alt Z at any time, whether you have a game up or some other type of software to open up the interface. Overall, I really like the layouts of the interface. It's not too bulky. It doesn't really slow down my system whatsoever. And in particular, if you're playing on a single monitor setup, like a laptop, or you just have a single external monitor, you know, being able to bring up that overlay and make those changes without having to alt tab out of the game or do any kind of crazy things with, um, you know, window borderless mode, it's just absolutely great. It's quick, it's fast, and it's easy. So starting from the left and going to the right, we first have Instant Replay, which used to be called Shadow Play. It's a DVR mode, which when active, will constantly buffer a stream of footage of your gameplay or desktop. At the hit of keyboard shortcut, you can capture up to 20 minutes of footage, which is awesome for capturing those great moments that you weren't expecting and weren't already recording during. After turning it on, you have an option to save or you can use the default Alt plus F10 key combo to do so while in game without bringing up the interface. With the upload option, you can preview and trim your footage, then upload the footage to your YouTube account without having to open it up in any type of editing software or even leaving your game, which is pretty cool. It's really great for sharing quick clips with your friends and allows you to clean up space on your hard drive, not holding on to those older clips. Finally, you can customize your instant replay settings. Note if you have desktop recording enabled, you won't be able to change these settings without disabling that first, which actually proved to be a bit of a challenge for recording this video, but we got it done. But after changing that privacy policy setting, you can see you have options to change a number of different things. First, the replay length from 30 seconds to 20 minutes, which should be long enough to capture a full match of most of the popular online multiplayer games. If you're planning on doing commentary style videos, you probably just want to use the standard record feature, but this is again great for capturing those moments that you might have missed otherwise. Up here you can see it also gives you a preview of how much storage space will be required for this length of video based on the quality settings and resolution you have set below. Next you have some quality presets. Switching between these, you can see the changes it makes to the bitrate and what file sizes the resulting video will be. If you choose custom, you can go ahead and specify the bit rate yourself. And if you have the storage, then setting to the highest will be optimal, especially if you're gonna be doing any editing in software like Premiere, Sony Vegas, or Final Cut. Having a higher bit rate is always a good thing. 
If not, you should check which media site you're going to be uploading this to for its recommended bit rate and set it to something close to or above that. Finally, you can choose your resolution and frame rate in game is probably your best bet for resolution, but you can have it scaled up or down if it suits you. For frame rate, you're probably going to want to go with 60 FPS for the smoothest possible resulting footage. As you can see, the options I chose mean I'll be recording 20 minutes of instant replay footage at 60 FPS. 50 megabits per second and will result in a 7.5 gigabyte file size, which with current storage prices isn't too bad at all. You can pick up a one terabyte hard drive for around 60 to $70 and that should have you covered for storing quite a bit of footage, but hopefully you'll be editing and uploading it to your favorite site to get uh, some of that size down. Next up we have record with this. You can start recording manually and continue to do so basically until you run out of storage. The keyboard shortcut for this by default is alt plus F nine. So you can quickly start and stop recording while in game. Checking out the customization options for this section, you can see it's pretty much essentially just the exact same stuff we already talked about for instant replay. So let's move on. Then we have game stream co-op currently called stream in this interface, which is a new feature. This lets a friend watch you play or you can have them play along with you or even take over control of your game to help you get past that level or boss you've been struggling against. It's really, really great to be able to play these type of, you know, multi controller games with a friend remotely, you know, be it if they don't have a copy of the game themselves or maybe the game doesn't actually have kind of online um, co-op yet, you can still play with your friends who are, are really anywhere across the world, which is pretty damn cool. Now I'm not sure, but I think this uses a lot of the same tech from Nvidia Shield Game Stream and GeForce Now services, which Nvidia has obviously invested quite a bit of time and money into. Note that to use this, you have to have instant replay turned off and you also have to be playing a supported game. But once you're all set up, you can send a friend an invite to watch or play. They need Chrome running and will be prompted to download and install a plugin. And after that, they can join in on your gaming fun. There are similar features in other software such as Steam and home streaming and Steam broadcasting, which lets you stream games locally to another PC or let your friends watch you play respectively. However, in home streaming doesn't work remotely and Steam broadcasting doesn't let a remote player play along with you. Overall, the quality is pretty good and the user experience and user interface is pretty good. You can just send a quick link, which is very similar to what most people are used to in uh, apps like Discord and stuff like that to allow anybody in the world to um, share your experience game with you and all that kind of stuff. If you guys want a more in-depth look at this, you know, maybe looking at the quality and capturing some of the footage that's being streamed across uh, in more detail, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do. The rightmost square is for broadcasting and let you stream to not only Twitch, but also now YouTube, which is new to one of the beta updates of this software. You can start your stream by hitting the start button or alternatively toggle streaming on and off by hitting the Alt F8 keyboard shortcut. I'll have more on setting this up in the settings rundown a little bit later. Checking out the customization, you can switch between settings for Twitch or YouTube, which are again pretty similar to what we saw in the recording customizations. You've got presets, resolution, frame rate, and bit rate. But you'll definitely want to test this out for yourself. Try a lot of different settings in terms of what you're capturing at and what you're streaming at, your bit rate, and all that kind of stuff. It's going to highly depend on your particular hardware. Um, and uh, things like your internet connectivity, your ISP, the type of upload and download speeds you have in particular. I do recommend you turn off uh, the auto notify, like the auto tweet thing when you're doing these test streams. You don't want people constantly seeing test stream popping up in their Twitter feed. Just turn that off or use an alternate account when you're doing these types of tests. That way when you you know really start streaming and you're really getting into it, you have the settings down. You don't have to fuddle with things and like lose viewers and that kind of stuff. And once you have it set up, it's actually really, really easy. You don't have to worry about launching any extra applications. It generally launches in the background and you can start streaming with one touch of a button or two buttons. Whatever. In the top right of this overlay screen, you can get into your gallery, which tracks your recordings that you've previously made. Just like before, when I showed you with the upload, you can watch them back or trim them, title them and upload them straight to YouTube. Under the gallery, you have some settings menu. First are quick toggles for mic and camera settings. For the mic, you can choose between push to talk, always on or off. And then in the customization menu, you can also change your choice of recording device, set the volume and mic boost level. 
camera option it quickly lets you toggle the camera on or off and settings opens up the main settings menu. Connect lets you sign into a number of accounts to let you share your videos and images or stream gameplay easily through these accounts. In overlay you can control if and where things like a status indicator, FPS counter, camera and view counter show up in your screen. Keyboard shortcuts let you view or change keyboard shortcuts to open up the overlay, push to talk, toggle things on and off and start or stop streaming or recording. Recordings let you choose where on your system your final recordings and the temporary files used while recording go. Nvidia does a pretty good job of creating folders and naming your footage based off the specific game you're playing with time stamps and all that kind of stuff so you can sort through them pretty quickly. But it's worth noting that if you have desktop capture turned on and switch between your desktop and game, some gameplay captures could end up in the desktop folder. I know a couple friends who tried to capture some moments with shadow play and then gone to the folder for the game that they were playing and didn't see it and it actually turned out to be in desktop or occasionally this little folder called DWM. Stream is just another toggle for whether you want game stream co-op on or off. Then over in broadcast is where the nitty gritty settings for streaming games to Twitch or YouTube reside. You can have it always ask you what you want to stream to when you start or pick a default like Twitch or YouTube or have it never broadcast at all if you just want to be safe and you kind of willy nilly hit Alt F8 and end up streaming something you don't want to stream. A cool new feature they recently added is an option to allow a custom stream overlay to go on top of your footage but below your camera. Not as dynamic as something like OBS or XSplit, but a good option if you're just kind of getting into streaming and want to brand and make your stream look unique and more recognizable. Gallery lets you set a default cloud service to upload your screenshots to, or you can have it ask you every single time. And finally, privacy control lets you pick whether you'd like to be able to DVR, record, stream, or screenshot your desktop and apps besides games. I tend to have desktop recording enabled because I use it a lot when I'm recording, um, you know, tutorials like this one, or even in my reviews when I'm trying to uh, record the browser in full screen mode or something like that, so I can scroll through a lot of you know details on a web page and things like that. But that is pretty much it for this kind of overview of the NVIDIA GeForce Experience Share software in terms of overall quality and ease of setup and use this is definitely at the top of my list that said there are some things i want to see added the ability to have multiple audio tracks i'm pretty sure it's possible we've got dx story doing it already i do use dx story every once in a while when i do want to have those multiple audio tracks and now obs studio has it as well and what this really really enables is just a lot of flexibility for content creators if you're recording gameplay you know maybe online multiplayer with your friends and um you know you have the most exciting play but you've got your friend screaming on it over discord you know it can absolutely ruin your video you're not going to be able to have as many ways you can use that clip you know if you want to use it in a montage and you want to have the actual game sound you're not going to be able to do much with that except for i don't know try to redub in some audio but if you have things on multiple tracks and you have a audio mixer you can set it up so that you have your game sound on one track and your system sound you can have music playing on another track if you're streaming and um, disable that in post you can have your friends uh chat program um like team speak or um you know whatever it might be discord curse on a, um, a separate track and you can have your uh your own microphone on another track so you have all that flexibility in post-production you can lower levels if you know you want your friends in there but not to be uh super super loud and that's great if you guys want to see a tutorial on how to set some of that stuff up in some of that other software i'll be happy to do that if you guys want to see overviews of tutorials of any other types of software go ahead and let me know in the uh comments again and if you want to see specific tutorials on how to do specific things like record gameplay let me know in the comments as well Go ahead and like the video if you enjoyed it. Share it with a friend who you know is, you know, wanting to share the their gaming experiences with the world. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. We've got other types of videos on the channel as well. We've got hardware unboxings and reviews, PC builds, um, some other type of gaming content. And uh, I think you guys will really enjoy it, so you should subscribe. Follow me on your favorite social media sites if you want to, you know, stay more up to date with what I have going on. I try to share a lot lot on there when I'm not too too busy making content and my main job and family and all those things but thank you guys for watching really really enjoyed doing videos like this I'll see you in the next one peace